Hello no one, Xana's back. Today I thought it would be a good idea to talk about lines and offer up some of what I've learned about them so far. The character I'll be working on in this video belongs to my brilliant best friend and is part of a story her and I write together. She's graciously designed this character and I just could not resist drawing her and my own character behind her, so thank you! I'm gonna leave her social media links in the description box. Please check her out. She is amazing. I'll also mention that there are unfortunately portions of the screen recording missing. My iPad and I were bickering and honestly I erased and redrew the top of her hair twice and I wasn't gonna do it a third time. <laughs> As we'll all learn, line work can be extremely time consuming. If you catch me pulling down the command center um, in here, you'll see it a few times. Um, that's me making sure that it's still recording uh, and still losing bits. No matter how paranoid I was, it just wasn't happening. Um, so let's talk about lines. Lines or the absence of are vital parts of any artwork. The J. Paul Getty Museum's website defines line as a line is an identifiable path created by a point moving in space. It is one dimensional and can vary in width, direction, and length. Lines often define the edges of a form. Lines can be horizontal, vertical, or diagonal, straight or curved, thick or thin. They lead your eye around the composition and communicate information through their character and direction. I've got the link to that page in the description box if you want to read more. So let's start with the bad news. Nothing I say in this video will instantly overhaul your artwork the next time you decide to draw. It will take time and practice and there are no short shortcuts to that short crutch. <laughs> I can tell you that it is a worthy investment. Here's the real first tip. Line weight. Line weight refers to the thickness of a line or the heaviness in a portion of a line. When thinking about your lines, imagine how they might be affected by your light source. Lines that represent the underside of a piece of armor, for example, could be in shadow, so that portion would be much thicker than the line representing the highlighted edge nearest to your light source. This is defining the edges of a form, like the Getty website said, if we're being technical. In places like the eyelashes in this piece, the lines start out thick and taper off, which in that instance is much more pleasing than just a blunt end. Tip number two. Consider the lines you're using. Uh, a line from a ballpoint pen will look very different from a line created by a felt tip pen like a Sharpie or even a Copic marker. Your paper can also have an impact on this. Computer paper or Bristol board is smooth, but a watercolor paper with more texture will give you a different feel. In Photoshop and other programs that can be used to create digital art, you can decide on the hardness of your brush. It's a similar concept. The edges are harder or fuzzier depending on your settings. This will have an effect on the way your final piece looks. If you look at the options to the left of my display here, you can see that I'm using a G pen and below it is a real G pen. The real G pen has uneven edges that emulate the texture created by a real G pen nib on paper. Personally, I like the ultra crisp lines, so here we are. You can also see that because of my settings, I don't change the size of my brush at any point. Tip number three. Do not be afraid to redraw your lines. There are plenty of times that I have erased and redrew portions of my work over and over again until I got the right look. This can really make a world of difference in your line quality as well as in how you feel about your work when it's done. I promise you that you will feel better about those awesomely executed lines than you will about a section that you gave up on. So be patient with yourself. Tip number four, keep it clean. Or not. <laughs> this one depends on your style, of course. If your style is sketchy and has a lot of texture, then make sure to carry that through your work. 
if you're going for a look like I use here or like in a lot of manga and anime, then you probably don't want to have strange wispy bits coming off the middle of your curves. Keep it clean. Tip number five, follow through. If you look in this piece, a good example is the hair on top of this character's head. With a few exceptions, my lines carry through from their start all the way through to the end of the tendrils, and you don't see any broken lines. By doing this, it will give a much cleaner appearance and a sense of flow that we want in the hair that is pulled back or plaited. Tip number six. Try different techniques to emulate different textures. Hatching, cross-hatching, and even squiggly lines like a wood grain can give very different feels depending on how you execute them. Tip number seven. Think about the feeling that you're trying to convey. A sharp and pointed line is going to give your audience a harsh feeling or maybe a sense of anxiety, whereas a curve may give a feeling of peace like the ripples of a pond. Lines will convey emotion to your audience, so be sure that your lines are saying what you want them to. If we look at the bit of my character Saga's hair in the water, there's a different feel as it hits that water surface than it has hanging in the air. It's a little bit heavier, right? Tip number eight, consider your tools. I know there's a school of people out there that feel digital art is cheating. Um, a group of art nerds that I call my friends and I had a good laugh about this and how we weren't quote manual artists, whatever that means. <laughs> In traditional art, sometimes it will be appropriate to freehand a relatively straight line or if you're a freak of nature and can just draw a straight line, maybe that works. Um, <laughs> Then other times it will be wise to whip out a ruler. The same goes for digital art. Going back to my pen settings, you can see that I'm utilizing the pen stabilization feature to counteract the shakiness my hands have gotten in the last year. So just like that, take advantage of the tools available to you to express yourself and just let the judgy folks shove it. We can rant more about this another day. Line stabilizer. Lines. Tip number nine. Use your body to your advantage. When making your lines, you will have the most strength and confidence when coming towards yourself than you will moving away from you. That isn't to say that you shouldn't try both. Try experimenting with how this affects your lines. Sometimes I find that I'm trying to make a soft line or maybe I'm just generally getting a little heavy handed. I will then make a line that moves away from me to get a lighter line, and sometimes even that's just enough to reset my weight, if you will. As always, utilize your whole arm and even your upper body, not just your wrist when you're casting larger lines, straight or curved. Not only will getting in this habit be better for your lines and get rid of any unwanted wiggly shakiness, but it will be better for your wrist too. All this practice can take a toll on you physically. On the topic of health, don't forget to get up and stretch periodically. Go on, get up, stretch and wiggle your legs, I'll wait. <laughs> Tip number 10, give yourself the freedom to fail and succeed. This one's a lot scarier when working in traditional mediums. Often my initial sketches are very loose and general. I do this on purpose to find the lines that I want somewhere in the middle of my sketch, if that makes any sense. Of course, there's been plenty of abominations created in this process, but over time, I've been able to give myself a lot of valuable confidence. Maybe for you, this means picking up a pen and drawing without a sketch and just hopping right into that ink. You can learn a lot by disregarding everything except how you're creating these lines. Even a failure is a successful learning experience. Of course, this whole list is a lot of my opinion, but I do hope that maybe there's even one tidbit in here that will help you. If you have any questions or comments to add to this information, please leave a comment down below. Also, if this was helpful for you, please consider subscribing for future videos. There's a lot that we can learn in the art world together, and I'm looking forward to it. As always, let's take each day and each drawing and every line one at a time.
Bye.